this video series, we're going to be working on seated qigong. So this video is going to be your intro that's going to explain how to do it, the correct posture, the correct focus, and how to finish it out. And the next few videos will be videos that you can follow along with that will basically be silent except for um, quiet chimes that let you know when something is changing, when you need to change your position or something like that. So um, each video that follows this one will be a follow along video of different time intervals. You can pick an interval that works well for you and practice along with it, hopefully daily, but if not, as often as possible. Since this is a seated Qigong, there's different ways that you can sit, different places that you can sit, and it really depends on what's most comfortable for you. Some people like sitting directly on the floor. For some people, that's a little too uncomfortable. They like to sit on a cushion or a pillow. Um, some people like to sit in the chair as they do this because their legs aren't strong enough or flexible enough to sit all the way on the floor, and it's a little too strenuous on their joints. So we'll discuss briefly some different things that you can sit on. Obviously, a, a cushion is um, probably the most preferred for those who have the, the leg flexibility to sit very close to the floor. What I use instead of an actual cushion is a conditioning bag because I don't like how cushions give so much. So this is kind of a firmer surface to sit on and it allows you to adjust and kind of find, uh, at least to me, a very comfortable spot. So that's what I use. You can use obviously a pillow um, or just sit directly on the floor. Another thing that a lot of people like to use is a chair, but when you use a chair, there's a specific way you need to do it. And we'll get into how to sit on the floor and the cushion correctly in a little bit. But when you sit on a chair, um, one of the problems that a lot of people immediately have is that when they sit down, they want to put their back up against the back of the chair. And you want to avoid doing that because that's going to teach you to be lazy in your posture, and you're not going to learn how to find the correct balance in your posture and how to sit relaxed and erect without using a lot of extra tension. You're just going to learn how to lean up against something that's supporting you, which is very easy to do and we can all do without having to learn any more about ourselves or how our body structure works. So when you're sitting in a chair, make sure that your back doesn't touch the chair. I'll go ahead and have a seat here. The other thing you want to make sure of is that your legs come out parallel to the floor. So if you're sitting in a chair and it's bringing your knees up higher than your hips, or if you're sitting in a chair that has your legs pointed down toward the floor, you need to find a different height for your chair. This one's just about the right height for me, so when I sit in it, my legs, my upper legs, are parallel with the floor. The other thing is you want your ankles directly under your knees. So you don't want to pull your feet back in under the chair, and you don't want to push them way out in front. You want them pretty much directly under the knees, so that your knees have a 90 degree angle in them. When you have that set up correctly, then you can work on finding the posture where your spine is straight. You can tilt your hips a little forward or a little back to straighten out the curvature of the lower back, tuck the chin, straighten out the neck, gently press your tongue against the roof of the mouth, so on and so forth. We'll go a little bit more into what you're supposed to do with the rest of your body um, later on in this video. But the key points for sitting in a chair is just make sure you aren't leaning back against the back of the chair. Make sure that your feet are flat on the floor, make sure that your knees aren't higher or lower than your hips, that your thighs are parallel to the floor, and that you don't have your legs extended out or pulled back under you, that they're pretty much directly under your knees. Just for the sake of a slightly better angle, I'm going to do this facing to the side here. So again, you make sure your back is straight, you don't want it to round, and you don't want it to bow the other way. You don't want to lean forward or lean back, and you definitely don't want to be resting against the back of the chair. I know I'm saying that a lot, but it's really, really, really tempting when you're sitting in a chair and you have the back of it right there. When you start to get a little bit tired or a little fatigued, it's like, oh, you know, I could go longer if I just lean back. But it would actually be better practice for you to stop your qigong when you start to feel fatigued than to do sloppy qigong in, in a sloppy posture like that. So when you're seated and your back is straight, again, thighs parallel to the floor, and what I was saying earlier is you don't want your feet out from under your knees and you don't want them in underneath you. You want to set them up so that this leg is perpendicular or this, this leg, this portion of your leg is perpendicular to the floor on both legs and the feet are flat against the floor. So you don't want to roll your feet up or lift your toes or lift your heels. You want to make sure that they're completely as flat as possible. Maybe they can't be completely flat, which is a good thing, but they're as flat as possible pressing against the floor lightly. It's important to note when you're doing the Qigong sitting in a chair that your feet are never going to change their position. So they aren't going to move forward, they aren't going to move back. Toward the end, 
of this Qigong exercise. If you're sitting on the floor, you've had your legs crossed, so we're going to straighten our legs out. When that happens in the videos where you follow along, if you're sitting in a chair, don't straighten your legs. Keep them flat on the floor. So in the video, when you see me sitting on the ground or sitting on this um, conditioning bag, and you see me straighten out my legs, if you're sitting in a chair, keep your feet exactly where they are. So you don't want to straighten them out like that. You want to keep them right where they are. I know I've said that a lot of times, but it's really important and it tends to slip by a lot of people. They see the feet opening up and the legs straightening and they think, I need to do that too. When you're sitting in a chair, you don't get to do that. Your feet stay flat on the floor the entire time. So it's a little different for those of you that are going to be sitting in a chair, but the only difference is the lower half of the body never changes. For the majority of the time while we're sitting on a cushion or sitting on the floor, our lower half is going to stay the same. Then right towards the end, it changes a little bit. But when you're in a chair, again, I'm saying it one more time because it's really important, make sure that you keep that exact same posture with the lower half of the body. The kind of cushion that you use is very much a personal preference thing. Um, if you decide to sit directly on the floor, if you're sitting on kind of a slippery floor, sometimes your legs will want to start to kind of unfold from the cross legs position because there's no real friction holding them there. If you're sitting on a slick floor, a lot of times they'll kind of separate a little bit. And if you're not holding tension in them, which we don't want to hold tension in them, we want them to sit relaxed. So if you're going to be sitting on a smooth surface that has very little grip and is possibly slippery, then it's not a bad idea to put like a small area rug down, just enough for you to sit on. And it's not going to add much cushion, so it's not really going to affect how it feels to sit on the floor. It's just going to give a little bit of extra friction so your legs won't slide out and make your posture a little bit. Um, uncomfortable for you. So that's really the only tip I have for sitting on the floor. I personally don't like sitting on the floor. I like sitting on something, um, but I like sitting on something fairly small. I don't really care for cushions because they tend to change their shape as you're sitting on them. When you sit down, as you're sitting there longer, a lot of times they will give a little bit more or compress a little bit more, and it changes your posture enough, and you have to sit there and readjust in the middle of your Qigong, and it can be a little distracting. So depending on the kind of cushion that you're using, that may or may not be a problem, but it's something that I kind of don't prefer or don't really enjoy. So I use a conditioning bag, which is definitely not as comfortable as a cushion, but I find that it doesn't um, sort of shift on me in the middle of Qigong. As soon as you kind of find your spot on it, you can stay there for the rest of your Qigong, and it's not going to be a problem um, with it shifting. So that's what I prefer. Um, it's really up to you, whatever you use. Whatever it is, just make sure it's something you can sit on comfortably for an extended amount of time. So once you're seated on your pillow or cushion or the ground, whichever you prefer, what you're going to do is cross your legs. Now there are different ways to cross your legs. You can do a half lotus or a full lotus or just cross your legs like normal. If you don't know what those other terms mean, don't worry about it. Um, just crossing your legs is fine. Some people find it more comfortable the other way. I find this way most comfortable. The important thing to remember when you're crossing your legs is that it's not lopsided. So sometimes when people cross their legs, they really push one leg in up under the other one, so it makes one leg sit higher than the other and the other one drops lower. And if you pay attention to what that does to your hips, it will tend to rock your hips one way toward the lower leg. So you really want to make sure that wherever your feet are positioned, it's not pushing one leg up or pushing the other leg up because that's going to push your hips out of alignment. They aren't going to be level. It's going to make it harder to keep your spine straight up and down, and you're going to build up a lot more tension as you're trying to do your Qigong. So it's going to get a lot more uncomfortable. It's going to be harder to focus, and it's going to be harder to last um, as long as you would probably be able to otherwise with your hips level. Once you have your legs crossed evenly so that one leg is not higher than the other and your hips are still level, check to make sure that your spine is straight up and down, that you don't have curvatures. So you're going to straighten your back so you'll tilt your hips just enough to straighten out the curvature of the lower back just like you would in standing Qigong. You tuck your chin slightly to straighten out the curvature of the neck so that your spine is as straight as possible. Some things that tend to happen when people are practicing seated Qigong is they'll roll their hips too far and what happens is their lower back, instead of being straight, starts to bow out behind them and that puts a lot of extra pressure on those lumbar vertebrae and it's not really a, a good posture. It's going to cause discomfort in the lower back as you try to do the seated Qigong. So you want to make sure that your hips are lined up so that your spine is still straight. Another problem is some people lean forward too much and not only does that put too much curve in the lower back, 
but it also brings your upper body forward so your back muscles have to tense up more to keep you upright. So you want to make sure that you're straight up and down. Aside from the straight spine, you also want to gently press your tongue against the roof of your mouth. And again, imagine you have a string gently pulling on the top of your head that's elongating your spine. You relax the shoulders, you relax the chest, and you just check that alignment. So when you first get seated and you're getting ready to do your Qigong, fold your legs in, make sure everything's level, make sure your hips are level, check your spine, gently touch your tongue against the roof of your mouth, elongate your spine, and that's kind of your first check to make sure everything is where it's supposed to be. From there, you have some variations that you can do. There's different hand positions that you can do. Um, some people like to do the hand position like we would do in a standing John Zhuang Qigong. Some people like to place their hands on their knees, palm up, and then curl in either the middle finger and gently touch the thumb to it, or curl in the index finger and gently touch the thumb to it. Those are options that are available. It's totally fine if you want to do that. The one that we're going to use for this particular Qigong is a little simpler. You don't have to have any particular hand posture with it. Um, it's just you set one hand on top of the other, both of them palm up, and you're going to take your thumbs and bring them in so that the tips just barely touch. So you don't want a lot of pressure between the thumbs and you don't want space between the thumbs. You want to make sure that they just barely touch each other. And it's just a very relaxed hand posture, so you don't have to hold tension anywhere. It's just there, and they kind of support themselves. Then what you do is you place them right in front of your lower belly. So you can rest your hands on the inside of your thighs, touch the thumbs together, and this little hole that you're making is right in front of your lower belly. So my thumbs are crossing right about the level of my belly button, and then below that is where the hole is um, that my hands are making. Once you're in that posture, again, check to make sure everything's aligned, relax the shoulders, relax the chest. And your focus for this can be different from when you first start to later on in your practice. When you first start, you don't really have to pay attention to any particular point on your body. The most important thing to pay attention to is that you're breathing deeply. As you inhale, you inhale really deep. As you exhale, you exhale fully. And that you're staying relaxed and that your posture is supporting you rather than muscle tension. So when you first start, it's more about being aware of your body. It's more about paying attention to how your structure is. Is everything lined up like it's supposed to be? Is one shoulder higher than the other? Am I leaning forward? Am I leaning back? You know, am I, are my hips tilted? You're learning to listen to your body and find out where everything is. So as you're first practicing this, don't necessarily focus on any particular um, energy flow or any particular point in your body. Just be aware of your body and pay attention to how it's feeling. And once you find that your body is relaxed, that its structure is correct, that you're able to sit in that posture for a decent amount of time and not feel uncomfortable, then you can start to focus on your lower belly as you breathe because you've already figured out how to regulate your body's posture so you can stop focusing on that so much. Still be aware of it, but you can shift your focus to your lower belly as you breathe. So at first, you're focusing only on the structure. After that, you focus on the lower belly. And it's really up to you how long it's going to take you to make that transition from focusing on the general structure of your body to focusing on the lower belly as you breathe. It's really something you have to just feel when it's right, when you say, okay, I can sit like this and it's comfortable and everything's aligned and I'm not constantly having to make adjustments to make sure I'm where I'm supposed to be. I'm just kind of sitting comfortably here. And that's when you know, okay, I can stop focusing on that so much, still be aware of it, but then start focusing on the lower belly as you breathe. And it's very important to be relaxed as you do this. You don't want to sit here tense. You want to sit here relaxed and allow the body's energy to flow like it should and focus on the lower belly when you reach the point that you can do that. The next thing is at the very end of this Qigong set, there's a certain set of movements that we go through to kind of finish it up. So instead of just finishing here and standing up and walking away, if you've been sitting for a while, you'll notice that your legs sometimes start to get a little bit um, stiff or sore and it's a good idea to move them kind of gently before you try to stand up and walk away and to kind of bring yourself out of the meditative state that you're in after you've been sitting and doing your Qigong for a while. So the first thing that we do after we finished our Qigong set is we're going to gently straighten our legs. And you want to do it nice and slow because your legs haven't really been moving for a little while and you want to be nice to them. You don't want to just pop them out there without giving them a chance to kind of ease into the motion. The next thing that you do is you place your hands palm down on the tips of your kneecaps, right there. So the center of your palm, the Lao Gong point, goes right on the tops of the knees, and you relax the fingers down over the knees like so. You want to keep your legs relaxed and your feet 
pretty much straight up and down. If they move out a little bit or in a little bit, that's not so bad, but you don't want them way out and together touching. You want them pretty much straight up and down. Once your hands are here, you change what you're focusing on. You were just focusing on the lower belly. Now you're focusing on moving energy or moving that breath in and out of your legs to help increase the circulation and increase the energy flow to the legs because there hasn't been much going on with the legs while you've been sitting in your Qigong. So what you're gonna do is as you inhale, you imagine that you're pulling that breath or you're pulling the chi in through the bottoms of the feet, up the legs, to the lower belly, and then as you exhale, you send it back down through the legs and out that same point at the bottoms of the feet. So as you inhale, it comes up to the lower belly. As you exhale, washes down through the feet and out the bottoms. And each time you inhale and each time you exhale, you want that mental picture coming in, flowing back out for each inhale and each exhale. And you can do that, probably your minimum would be three times. I usually do at least five times. And you can go anywhere from five to 10. Kind of depends on what you feel like is necessary after you've done your seated Qigong. So after you've done that, again, breathing all through the nose, tongue still gently touching the roof of the mouth, and you're still maintaining that same posture. You don't want to hunch over as you do this or change your posture dramatically. You, it will change a little bit because you are pushing your arms forward to reach the knees, but it shouldn't change that much. It's, it should still be a good, balanced, straight up and down posture. So after you finish that breathing, inhaling and exhaling, then you're going to circle the hands up over the head and bring them down in front. And this breathing pattern is the same as what it was at the end of the John Zhuang Qigong. If you've seen those videos or if you've done that, then you will recognize from here on for the, the rest of this Qigong. If not, don't worry about it. So after you finish that, you're going to exhale as the hands circle up. Inhale as they come down. Exhale as they circle up. Inhale as they come down. You do this three times. Exhale and inhale, then cross the hands over the lower belly. Each time you're exhaling, you're imagining that that energy is flowing out through the bottoms of the feet. Each time you're inhaling and drawing down, you're imagining that you're pulling more energy in through the top of your head down to your lower belly. So as you inhale, you're drawing down through the center of your body to your lower belly. As you exhale, you're sending from the lower belly out, washing out through the feet. So you've finished here. You can inhale as you bring your hands up or toward your torso and hips, and then exhale as they circle up. So it's inhale, exhale, flowing out through the feet. Inhale, drawing in through the top of the head, down to the lower belly. Exhale, flowing from the lower belly out through the bottoms of the feet. Inhale, draw down. And then your last one, exhale, Inhale, and on this inhale, when you bring the hands down, they're gonna cross over your lower belly. So you're not going to let that energy flow back out the bottoms of the feet. After you draw it in, you're gonna keep it in the lower belly and focus on it there for a few more breaths. So the amount of time that you spend focusing there is completely up to you. Um, do at least three breaths is probably a good idea. Anything more than that's awesome, but try not to do any less than that, because you do wanna spend a little bit of time here refocusing on the lower belly before you finish up. So then you would spend however much time that you want to focusing on the lower belly as you breathe. Then you're going to rub your lower belly. You want to come up on the right side, across, down on the left side, and back across. So you're rubbing in a circle like that. And it's just a light, gentle rub. You don't have to put a lot of pressure. Um, this is just to help regulate your body's energy flow and gently massage your internal organs. The number of Repetitions that you do of this isn't necessarily that important. Just listen to your body and do what feels right. Then you're going to put your hands on your lower back and right about where the kidneys are, you're gonna rub gently, making small circles with the hands. So the hands about kidney height, you're making small circles coming up along the spine, out and down, and then back in, there. And again, just rub the kidneys as long as feels right for you. After you finish that, you rub the hands together. Hopefully they're warm by now, but if they're not, this will help warm them up a little bit. And then you gently massage your face, coming up the center, out, down to the sides, and back in.
And when you're done with that, you've completed the Qigong set and you can stand up slowly and resume your daily activities. So we'll go through that one more time, a little bit quicker, just explaining everything one more time, and hopefully that will make it easier for you to follow along when you do the follow along Qigong videos. So we've just finished the Qigong set. We're gonna gently and slowly straighten the legs with the toes up, place the hands palm down on the tops of the kneecaps. As you inhale, you imagine you're pulling energy in through the bottoms of your feet up to your lower belly. And as you exhale, you send it back down through the legs and out through the bottoms of the feet. When you finish that, you inhale, pulling the hands towards your to torso. Then you exhale as they circle up over the head. As you inhale, you imagine you're pulling in more energy in through the top of your head, drawing it down to your lower belly. And as you exhale, you let it flow out the bottoms of the feet. Inhale. Exhale, and on number three as you inhale, you draw it into your lower belly and then keep it there, crossing the hands with the lower belly. Focus on your lower belly as you breathe for a few more breaths. When you've finished, rub the belly coming up on the right side, across, down on the left. For as many times as feels right to you. Then massage the kidneys in small circles. And when you finish that, rub the hands together and gently massage your face. And then you finished your seated Qigong.